Aloha. I'm joined today by Chad Blair, the politics editor for Civil Beat. Chad, we're here to talk about how Hawaii is going to be the linchpin in the presidential election, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Boy, it's going to be a long night, Tuesday, <laughs> November the 5th, because we don't finish until 7, right? You know? Exactly. So actually, no, we're here to talk about what's actually going on here in Hawaii. We just had the uh, primaries here. And looking forward to the general election, what are you seeing? I think there's two races in particular that have got a lot of people's attention. When I say two races, two parts of government, uh, on Hawaii County, where you're from, the Big Island, Mitch Roth, the mayor, is up against Kimo Alameda, uh, who's not a medical doctor, but uses doctor. Isn't that right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, they uh, neither of them got 50% of the vote plus one in the primary in August, and so they advanced to the general. And that looks to be a very interesting contest. There was a lot of people running for that race. Uh, and so I think that it's definitely, in many ways, it's the most highest ranking uh, race, if you will, right. uh, in terms of, you know, the, the hierarchy. And so I'll be watching that one carefully. The other one I think that kind of stands out, and I have to stop and think about this, but um, really the west side of Oahu, you have seen Republicans make inroads out there. In fact, they now have six members in the House out of the 51 members in the House, which are dominated by Democrats. But uh, there is a couple of Democrats trying to take those races back, those seats back from the Republicans. And we'll see Diamond Garcia, who's uh, one of the leaders in the minority in the House and who is up for re-election, is saying, we're finally making a show here. And it's not just out in Hawaii Kai, right? Or Aina Haina or, or Kona or Kailua, these uh, traditional Republican strongholds using the word stronghold with, with quotes here. Um, but we'll see whether the Republicans can maintain that momentum out West or whether the Democrats are able to wrest back some of those seats. Right. And it's because of those primaries, so many people ran unopposed. And <laughs> that's why we're kind of looking at these other races. And that's why we're actually able to spend a little bit more time looking right. at our constitutional amendments. Mm -hmm. Now, Chad, if you'll bear with nice me. Nice segue. All right. Yeah, if you'll bear with me here. The first of the constitutional amendments, and there's two of them that we're looking at, uh, shall the state constitution be amended to repeal the state, the legislature's authority to reserve marriage to opposite sex couples? What does a yes vote mean? Well, this goes back to 1998, and same thing. It was a con am, and the voters, by an overwhelming majority, I think it was 69%, basically said, essentially what they said is marriage should be reserved between a man and a woman, one man, one woman. And at the time, uh, Hawaii courts just have told the, the legislature, had told the government, look, if you want to discriminate against gay people who want to get married, you're going to have to come up with a compelling reason. Well, this turned out to be the compelling reason. They passed it, but it's kind Kind of weird because what they really did is they gave the legislature the authority to limit marriage to opposite sex couples and and, and that's effectively what happened it goes into a whole long legal the ad with the surf you know can i marry my surfboard right yeah mike gabbard actually that's when he really came to prominence there's even an ad that ran i've seen the video a young tulsi gabbard she couldn't be more than 12 and she walks up to mike at one point and says yeah you wouldn't marry your dog would you or something like that i'm not, I'm not making this up and tulsi actually was very uh, adamant against gay marriage just like mike was mike of course has now come around he's a state senator Senator, um, he is actually supporting uh, this amendment. And what it would do is it would take that that language about reserving the power uh, to the legislature, it would remove it. It is in our Constitution. And people that support gay rights, I would say a majority of people who support equal rights, civil rights, uh, say that's discriminatory. How can you have that on the books? One other thing, given what happened in the Dobbs decision before the U.S. Supreme Court on abortion, there was not just talk. Even Clarence Thomas was saying things like, well, let's look at some other things that we might want to turn back. Maybe maybe it will be interracial marriage or maybe it will be, for example, same-sex marriage and, and some other issues. So this doesn't codify it. And essentially, we do have a law on same-sex marriage here. Uh, but it's it, it just really looks bad on our Constitution. It's kind of like the U.S. Constitution saying black people are worth three-fifths of white people. That's still there. Or women. They, there is no equal rights right. amendment, yeah. right? Yeah. So the other constitutional amendment, and bear with me here, <laughs> all right, is shall the Constitution of the State of Hawaii be amended to make the appointment and confirmation process of district court judges the same as the appointment and confirmation process for Supreme Court justices and intermediate court of appeals and circuit court 
judges. Right. I could keep on going. But no, no, stop there. Say, what does a yes vote mean there? Well, it's really a housekeeping uh, measure in many ways. I, talking to Carl Rhodes, the judiciary chair who wrote the bill, basically it makes the system uniform. Um, why do you have three courts that have one way of picking uh, Vac filling vacancies, and then you have one other level of court that has a different one. They're very similar. The idea here is to make all four uniform. It would save time. Uh, it would be fair. I don't see any opposition to this. In fact, nobody testified on it. <laughs> nobody testified for it. Nobody testified against it, unlike the same-sex marriage bill. Um, um, not even the judiciary weighed in on this, but it looks like um, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Carl Rhodes' big concern is that people are going to look at it and go, what? Because <laughs> you only read part of it, right? There's right. There there are, no, four, it keeps on going it and going. It keeps on going. Yes. And we have a habit in here in Hawaii of uh, really not even turning out to vote. Not only that, a lot of us leave our sections of it anyway, blank. Instead of voting, we will leave things blank. Well, we have this rule, a very strange rule in Hawaii, where uh, blank votes count as no votes. votes. So do overvotes. Like if you right. mistakenly pick two people in the same race when you're not supposed to, Cancels. that counsels yeah. as well. And it has happened before. You have had con-ams that got a majority of quote unquote yes votes, me and the quotes today, <laughs> um, but failed because they did not have more than the no, the blank, and the overvotes. Carl, by the way, says he's actually going to bring up another con-am next time around to get rid of that stupid blank, blank vote blank thing. Yeah. So, Speaking of leadership uh, and going back on the primary, uh, there are significant leadership changes that are it's coming to the state legislature. Right. Yeah, we're going to have a new Speaker of the House. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dramatic. Um, you know, it was... Three times a charm, I guess you could say, but Scott Psyche, who has been in the legislature over half of his life, he's, a, he's, I'll just be frank here, Scott's a friend. I knew him before he got into politics, before I got into politics, but he's been in that place for 34 years, and he has been speaker for the last, I don't know, seven or eight years. And Kim Coco Iwamoto, on her third try, was able to finally defeat him, and, and it was such a narrow margin, I want to say 250 votes yeah, or something like that. Tight. All three races were very mm -hmm. close. But this upends the entire House of Representatives, as well as the leadership uh, in the state of Hawaii. Psyche worked very closely with Josh Green. Uh, we reported that it looks like Green might be getting him a cush job after right. all this, too. The, we'll see if that turns out to be he'll be insurance commissioner. Um, but um, you have a lot of people jockeying for power right now. And people like Kim Koko Iwamoto who is more or less from the progressive side, reform government. They feel like they've got the wind at their back and that somehow they're going to come in and be able to change things and be more progressive. I don't know if that's going to happen at all. Uh, there's a lot of people that supported Scott Psyche, and right now Nadine Nakamura uh, is the front runner to be the new speaker. It looks like we're going to have to wait until November the 5th, but believe me, those discussions are active. Right, right. Well, lots going to be happening here in Hawaii, even we're not voting on it a lot. Right, exactly. But, uh, and who knows, Chad, maybe someday we'll be sitting here talking about how Hawaii actually is going to be the linchpin <laughs> in the presidential election. It was, not it was. But apparently the 1960 election yeah, between Kennedy right. and Nixon, yes. Hawaii, they were waiting. Right? Yeah, they, were waiting. <laughs> they were waiting. Yeah. But, you know, meanwhile, Joe Kennedy had pretty much taken care of things in yes. Illinois and Texas. But that's another story. That's another story for later on. <laughs> well, Chad, we really appreciate you coming down and sitting with us. And we look forward to reading the rest of your writing. It's civilbeat.org. Thanks, Naka.